You may take a look through the window when in the sky and see the engines right under the wing. The thought may go through your head something like, oh, how fascinating. That little thing is what keeps us in the air at 37,000 feet. And after that, you go back to your movie, book, or iPad. Sure, it's cool, but we kind of expect it to work. Take it for granted and don't pay much attention to it. And at the same time, there's so much work going on behind the scenes. Fasten your seatbelts. Today, we're going to find out what it takes for a plane engine to be ready to go. Before you set foot on a plane or before its engine even starts operating, it must undergo many tests to prove it's safe. In one test, for example, they shoot water in the engine at very high pressure. Most engines change through time. Engineers tend to always build something new, improve some features, and generally upgrade engines to make sure they work the best they can. This part is certainly fun, or at least it is until the engine meets Mother Nature. To make sure it will remain efficient, experts need to create an engine that will be able to withstand insane storms, rain, ice, snow, extreme heat, and so much more. An engine needs to be ready for all that even before it gets into production. Engines can take enormous amounts of water. There are special tests for water ingestion. During such a test, a team forces a stream of water into a running engine. What's amazing is that they shoot nearly 800 gallons of water per single minute directly into it. These tests confirm you'll be safe on the plane, even during a heavy rain or insanely powerful storm. If the engine is designed properly and meets safety standards, the water will come out without damaging it. Moving on, when the temperatures are really low and the weather gets colder, everything gets icy and that can damage an engine and cause big problems for a plane. Such tests are especially tricky. Experts need to fire all kinds of ice particles into a running engine because you never know what you'll stumble upon up there in the air. By particles, I mean enormous balls of ice they throw into the engine. Not only do they want to see if the engine can take all that ice, but they also need to figure out how quickly it can recover after this. Hot and cold tests are fun too. To test if the engine is going to work in extreme heat, manufacturers will run it at maximum temperature and keep it like that for an extended period of time. During the flight, temperatures might get extremely high, but also very, very low. And when you want to test an engine in freezing temperatures, you need to go to a place where you'll have such conditions. For example, Canada's Arctic area of Nunavut. But dress well, because temperatures over there are not pleasant. They go down to negative 18 degrees Fahrenheit. Then you leave the engine there for a week to test it both in the air and on the ground. You know how cool it is to watch through the window as the plane's going up? Well, the reason it can even lift off the ground is these rotating blades. They're the most important part as they move at speeds of nearly 3,000 revolutions per minute. The engine reaches full thrust as they rotate. These blades just have to be secure, but things happen, so one of the blades might still fall off. That's why tests are an essential part of the process. You can see if some of the blades are not attached firmly enough and fix it so there's no chance they break off, especially while the plane is flying. If a blade falls off, it might hit other moving parts. It has happened in the past with some planes, so now tests are very strict. They allow specialists to understand if blades are set well before they get attached to the plane. During the test, engineers put a small explosive at the base of one of those blades. At the moment when someone starts the engine, bam! Oh, wow. That's how you see if the blade will stay inside the chamber of the engine. If it breaks off, the team goes back to the drawing stage. They know they need to redesign it and repeat the test. Even if a blade is as small as your finger, it can cause lots of trouble to the engine and, by that, the entire airplane. Speaking of blades, have you noticed those little white spirals you can see here in the center of an engine? They look cool, but they're definitely more than that. They're primarily there for the safety of the crew on the ground. Crew members usually can't hear it when the engine is running because they're mostly wearing hearing protection. Thanks to these spirals, they can see when the engines are on so they can stay at a safe distance. 
Another reason why they might be important, although this hasn't been proven yet, is that they scare away birds when they're in the air and prevent them from getting up too close to the plane's engines. So you're up there in the air, relaxing and reading your favorite book that keeps you calm. You're not a fan of flying, especially. Oh no, the captain speaking, saying you might go through some turbulence because you just got caught in the middle of a storm. He says there's nothing to be afraid of, it's normal even though the chances of lightning hitting your plane are very high at such altitudes. An average commercial airplane gets struck by lightning approximately once a year, and it can be very tricky to deal with this. In the past, some planes experienced that and even had to make an emergency landing. So, engineers needed to create a test to make sure a lightning strike wouldn't shut the engine down. They use lighter materials, like carbon fiber, these materials don't conduct electricity well, so they end up in both engines and the basic structure of the plane. Manufacturers also add a layer of foil or metal mesh, which makes the airplane even more protected from lightning strikes. So, when the captain asks you not to worry, it's not about giving false hopes or anything like that. With the existing system, you most likely won't even feel when lightning hits your plane. There are three stages of testing a finished airplane. During the first one, you check the system without the engine running. During the second one, the engine is running while mounted on a special stand. And the ultimate stage, and kind of best part, where you want to check if everything works right, is the in-flight test. You put the engine in a couple of different situations. Once the plane is in the air, the engine needs to show it can produce thrust. Remember those blades? It takes approximately two years to build an engine and set it for testing. Tests seem like something you can do within a short time, but in reality, this process can last for up to five years for a single model. When manufacturers launch a new design, they will use the first engine they built just for testing. That means that this particular model will never fly commercially. There are many, many more tests there, of course, like wing flex testing, for example. Wings flex during turbulence. This is the reason you have a smoother run. They test wing flex to nearly 150% of the maximum flex a plane will experience during a regular flight. Then there's an acceleration test. Different parts of a plane go through really big stress and pressure throughout the flight. Just picture racing down the runway for takeoff and then having to suddenly stop the flight and the plane itself. Acceleration tests basically apply strong forces to the components, or even the whole frame of an aircraft, just to make sure it will withstand all that stress. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.